you know, just remember under Labour how uh, high migration was all, always a negative thing and thrown back in their face. Well, apparently we are at the highest migration. More Kiwis are leaving New Zealand now than in the history of the country. Now, we've got to be fair. If you've only got two and a half million population in the 1970s or whatever it was, of course you're going to have fewer people leaving. Uh, and, I, and I'll be honest, I haven't actually done the per capita, which I know is something we love to do in New Zealand because that's how we compete with the rest of the world. Per capita, we got lots of gold medals at the Olympics. Um, <laughs> but but just the, the headline that uh, more Kiwis are leaving now than ever. Now, obviously there was a lot of Kiwis that came into New Zealand after, after and during COVID. But you would think if the population of New Zealand and the um, the interview I'm going to play tonight talks about we're losing our best and brightest, if the best and brightest were confident in the government to run this economy, why would they go anywhere? Just th just thought, you know, like, so is it indicative of people's lack of trust? Is it just purely about they're all the people who came home from Europe and now they're going back again? It's, it's an interesting Interesting old conversation. Also, Joey, going to have a look at uh, retail crime and how it's rife at the moment and why it is. But also on top of that, tying into that, the conversation around police officers, the um, the government's made New Zealand this promise that there'll be 500 new police officers. Now, we still are unclear whether that means additional or new, you know, because if, mm. if 400 retire and they put 500 new on, then they've done their promise. Um, but New South Wales is actively trying to take every single police officer they ever could. And apparently the um, police union is like, no, yeah, this, this is a pretty good offer. This, this is going to work. Lost 20 police officers last week. Last week, Jesus. we lost 20. So, um, yeah, if you did that for several weeks in a row, you're going to eat into Mr. Luxon's uh, 500 pledge, aren't you? You're losing 20 in a week. It doesn't take many of those weeks to end up being uh, a bad week or a bad time for for us. It's a hard one, isn't it, Chewy? Because, I mean, I know about your background and your, you know, mm. your kind of protest heart. Um, and a lot of people in that work in this world are like, you know, fuck the police and never trust the police and all that kind of stuff. And it's, it's an interesting one because a lot of people might say, good, fewer cops, better sort of thing. I find that happens with a lot of... Um, a lot of people until they have a serious crime committed against them and then they're, they're like oh come on help me please police but how do you feel about it because like i said i know you're sort of you're sort of i, I wouldn't say i should get i should guess that you're kind of a bit of a pushback against the police you know never trust mm. them. you are that but you'd be closer to that <laughs> yeah um look I, I i think overall the new zealand police aren't aren't rotten to the core like many other um, police forces are around the world and I think certainly and I'll acknowledge my privilege here, I'm a white dude in the South Island, my interactions yeah. with the police have mainly been negative, yeah. uh, sorry no, ma mainly been on the more positive side, if they have been negative to be honest it was my own damn fault mm -hmm. um, that sort of thing I made things a little bit worse for myself Um but if we're going through, it's like the nurses, man. It's if if we're going through the effort of training these guys, yeah, and we can't retain them, something is wrong. We need police. I I, I don't know if I agree with this constant, um, constant political football of we need more cops, we need more cops, we need more cops. That's got to be a problem. We've got to retain the ones that we do. We have to make sure that they're trained. We've got mm. to make sure that they interact with our community um, in a good way, in a net positive way. Um, and when I hear stories of, of so many cops leaving, you know, I made the joke is uh, they might as well have a shuttle bus from the police college to the airport um, the other day. Is, is like, it's not good value for the taxpayer. It's not good value for this country country because those new cops coming through probably have a more up-to-date mindset so what cops are remaining do we yeah. get the ones that aren't the pick of the litter the, the ones that are other police forces that don't want that doesn't sound good um and certainly if i was the minister for the police would i be taking the masses of police leaving the country as an indictment against my leadership yeah, I, I probably would be because you're asking a lot of the cops while rejecting their pay 
pay negotiations. Like the news that came, like, like I said uh, last week, it, it, it's amazing how quick this government statements fall apart, right? So the big, we're doing a fucking task force. We're doing an anti-gang task force. And it comes out today, no extra money, no extra stuff, no extra funding. So what the fuck is it? It's a yeah. bumper sticker. It's a new, it's, it's a, a new sponsor. badge for a police officer to put on their on their lapels. Yeah, and, and as we were talking about, um, you know, out of the conversation we had um, last night with Harry Tam, the experience both here and overseas is when you put together a, a task force. Um, often you get some pretty fucked behaviour from the police. Yeah. Where does it lead? Yeah, so I mean, there's a lot to lot to worry about. Look, I, I'm not someone that says we we don't need police. Yeah, um, I, I'm someone that acknowledges this the steps that the police have done to to rehab how things have done. Yep. To to understand that there's there's cultural things within their structure yep. and in the community that they need to be better at, and I think they have improved. But I don't. I don't trust the whole thing. Like it's 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 so easy to upset the balance. So yeah, there, there's a lot going on there, and I, I think it ties into the the greater discussion we're obviously going to have about Kiwis leaving. I think I don't think there's yeah. one answer there. I think yeah. there's a lot of people that came home for COVID, and now the world's opening up again. I think that a lot of these people will be people that that have had the overseas experience come back and seen how expensive it is here how yep. shit our housing stock is how poor our wages are and gone well it was nice to come home for a couple of years time to go yeah and then and then for the younger the the younger crowd going there are better opportunities from for me overseas and i've been stuck in my country for four years so the, the, i'm going the to one thing one thing that the government doesn't seem to be doing about people leaving is they constantly say about Australia, like, like actually, maybe to his credit, because mostly politicians wouldn't do this in the past. Luxon's just gone, well, they get paid better in Australia. But they haven't then taken the next leap to why do these public servants get paid better in Australia? Yes, they've got a bigger economy. Yes, they've got more money. But they've also got a very different tax system where they take more tax on things like selling houses and that sort of thing. So it's like, he he it's this thing that politicians do they may speak the truth but then they'll never go one step deeper publicly as to why can they afford to pay them more why can they do that and it's because there's more tax taken why is there more tax because that's the only place that public servants get paid by right more tax take per capita and that he never goes to that point to try and figure it out but look seeing we're here um you have to stick around if you want to hear the music track we'll do this but we're right in the middle of this so let's go and have a listen listen to uh sociologist uh is it paul spoonley i think it's paul spoonley let me get it right da, 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 da. yep paul spoonley uh just talking about why people are leaving i didn't i'm not showing the graphics at the beginning but just to let you know the graphics at the beginning have said seventy-eight thousand two hundred kiwis leaving per year and twenty-five thousand coming home so it's uh, the, for every one Kiwi that comes home, three are currently leaving. And the conversation this morning was, why are people leaving? Um, I just think, surely there's only one answer, and it's money. Even if you say opportunities, opportunity to what? To earn money. You know, that's actually, because, I mean, I, you know, Luxon's are, we're the greatest little country in the world. It's like, okay, okay, have you been to Fiji? Okay. Um, have you sat on a reef in the tropical islands? Um, but anyway, but, but, the the aunt, why would anyone leave New Zealand if you could earn twice as much as you could in Australia doing a job? You wouldn't. That you wouldn't. You just wouldn't. So it, it's just it's just money. The answer is why people are leaving, and it's money. Other than the OE guys who go for an adventure, but they tend to come back anyway. But people who are leaving for good, it's money. That's it, in my opinion. What are some of the reasons that we're seeing this? People leaving. Well, the major reason is Australia. So we have a country which is very large compared to us. It has much better salaries and wages compared to us. The Australians are over here actively recru recruiting at the moment. Yep. We've heard about the police. Oh, We've heard about, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and when you look at the starting salary in Australia, which is like 148000 compared with about 70000 here, 
and they're providing you with a 25,000 relocation package, why wouldn't you go? So mm -hmm. the, the, the push factors of what's happening in the New Zealand economy and the downturn in jobs, the job, um, uh, you know, people losing jobs, mm. and then the availability of good jobs, a very deep labour market, you know, a lot of options in Australia, and the salaries. So why wouldn't you go? And about half of those people who but are... But all, that all means money, job opportunities, mm. you know, and because job opportunity means money. So even you said three things there, they all come back to the money's better. And look, I know what I've just said is an absolute may not be true because it could be people going to the Queensland because they want better weather or warmer weather or whatever. But let's just be real. The huge majority of people are only leaving their homeland for a better financial gain. There are some byproducts like weather and stuff, but it's primarily like no one would go, I'm going to go live in Brisbane and earn half as much, would they? No, they wouldn't do that. But they'd say, I'm going to go to Brisbane because the weather's amazing and I'm going to earn 50% more and the cost of living's less. Money, money, money. Without the money, they're not going to go. Um, this is I've got about 60 seconds, Jerry, but I've just paused it. So if you want to jump in now, more than welcome. No, 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 no. Heard it. Let's keep going. Leaving are going to Australia. So that's our big destination. There's one thing that puzzles me, you see, it's we're six months into the new government. Yes. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it is. it's it's very unusual. Yeah, people are still still, are still going. Yeah. Still going. So I mean my understanding is with the police that some of them are hanging around to see what the job offer will be mm. before they go. Mm. So if the job offer from the government is not going to be attractive for the police. Is, if, as the police said, is insulting, mm. then that might be a target to get rid of some more of those police and take numbers out of that 500 perhaps. And I think we'll see quite a few more disappear over the Tasman. But I would have thought people might have stood, stayed around and seen, right, where's this government going, what it's going to do, yeah. is it going to help with the cost of living, all of those sorts of issues. But no, this is extraordinary. Yeah. The numbers just keep just keep piling up. Yeah, and it is it is interesting given the fact that this government has said they're going to fix the economy, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. So, so there you go. So if they're still leaving, even though this government has said they're going to fix the economy, et cetera, et cetera, as Jenny May just said, and – what is it for you? I mean, like, I guess we can't know every indication, but if you were assured that your income, your job opportunity were going to be better in New Zealand, you, I'm assuming most people wouldn't go anywhere. So does it speak to there being no trust in this government to be able to do what they want to do, like to be able to increase uh, the, the economy as much as they say they're going to do? Because they're still leaving. Yeah. Look, I, I, I don't think they've, well... I don't think there's one thing that that comes into it when people decide to move. I think money. you can boil it. I, I, I think if you're <laughs> going to put it down to one thing, it's going to be money. But if you okay. if you break if you break that down, yep. our food is expensive, our yep. housing is expensive and poor. Yep. There's underinvestment in business, so they can't pay attractive wages to keep people. Our government under taxes, and certainly doesn't target tax correctly in a way to increase our tax take we try to cherry pick things from other countries without understanding the context which those things exist the australian labor market is much uh more unionized than ours they have mm -hmm. have more more power that way um they have a, a huge mining industry um so even if they are taxing that relatively lightly they are still taxing it yep um you know, the, the, they do stamp duty on, on house sales and that sort of thing. There's, there's a lot of things that, that the Australians do that we could take ideas from. You know, I, I still come back to the fact that we identified where we're missing out on tax. We had a couple of parties with some really great ideas on tax and then people voted for the guys that were talking tax but talking about it coming back. And we've we've traded that we've traded some almost generational shift, and what could be funding things here in New Zealand, mm. and you need to break our investment in housing to supercharge this economy, but no one will do it because everyone is compromised by it. Yeah, or, or the and flip you side, can't, you can't, the you, flip you side can't be a government that comes in and goes, "We're going to fix all of that." You can't. Yeah. It'd be fucking Mad Max. But everybody needs to recognise those problems. 
and try and solve them rather than going, oh, fuck, we don't know why the young people are leaving. Anyway, pay round denied. And the, uh, they were talking about um, housing in the working group podcast last night. And I uh, and I saw you all in there again. I saw it. I saw all the names popping up in there. I'm watching you guys. Um, and they were talking about that. It was a bit of a strange comment, actually, because I think it was Duncan Garner who went, and, and for the first time, for the first time, first home buyers are the only ones buying houses. And then he went on to say 30% of the homes are being sold currently to first home buyers. And I was like, hang on. That means 70% of the houses aren't. But needless to say, they then made a joke about, but the difference is these first house buyers are 48 years old. So, you know, you, you can, and yeah. if, if, if the government's going to change all of that, I mean, it's funny, Chewie, you were saying it can be a myriad of things, but you mentioned food cost, which is money, housing cost, which is money, and pay, which is money. So, you know, it's, and, and, I just think that it probably it's a bit similar to the, the Three Waters conversation. All the mayors were saying, we want our own control. We don't want to have to do this. But none of them were saying, and it's going to cost you more. I mean, what would happen if, it, I, mean, I guess it's the Greens, aren't they? If they're going to go, you know what? We need to keep our police officers. We need to keep our nurses. We need to keep our public servants and professionals. So we're going to tax you guys more so we can pay them what they can get in other places that tax their citizens more. You know, just be blunt about it. I mean, maybe maybe say it's a bit nicer than that, but be blunt about it. There are some taxes coming, and the reason the taxes are coming is you guys all think that we don't have any uh, any nurses left, so we want to keep those. The reason that Australia can buy them is because they have more tax taken than us. See, the thing that New Zealand has got going for it is this is a nice place to live. Yeah, every you know, people like coming here. We have we have the landscape. We have we have a lot of things that people want. But if if it's too expensive to fucking live here, there, there's a reason that we have tech billionaires yep. building bolt holes here. There, yep. there is a reason that Auckland is absolutely crawling with with millionaires. Okay. It's a great place for those guys to live. Yeah. They get to keep all their money. They can go skiing. They can fucking drive their yacht around without orcas trying to sink them. It's great <laughs> here. And, and you know, it, it, it was one of the things that we saw when we had people coming back um, from overseas around COVID is it's like, well, this is a scary time, but it's good to be home. Mm. You know, we can't retain those people. It's it's like one of, the, one of the things that is always told in retail, right, is you don't want to lock the door on a customer, but you also don't want to let them leave unless you're really confident that you have the best offer. Yeah, you kind of want to lock them in, and I, I, I think that thing where you, you let people go overseas and that sort of thing, if they, if they find someone, if they buy a piece of land, if they sit, settle down and, and start a family, if they it, it's kid, almost impossible. It's almost impossible to come back. Yep. If they have you a know, kid in another part of the world and then that relationship breaks up, they either leave their kid because the kid's staying in the place they were born, or that we've lost them, and the and the people who are moving offshore at the moment are those sorts of younger adults you know 20 to 35 who who will be popping out sprogs in the next five to ten years hmm. i mean i've never really been tempted by australia you know i know it's not as simple as just there's better wages and that there, there, there's a lot of problems over in over in australia and i just don't like the vibe yeah. um but you know there, there are success stories you know people can go over and work in the mines and make a fucking years worth of money in three months and come home you know the, the i was talking to someone the other day that that works in the mines and lives here yeah yeah you know he just goes to work for six months and then comes back for six months you know it's the the comparison is weird but at, at the end of the day if we're not retaining our people and then we're having to import people from elsewhere to replace them that's that's not sustainable yeah no, and I don't yeah, want I'm... to talk it, turn it into an anti-migrant thing or anything like that. But it, it's it's one of those things. Like when we talk about the nurses, that the training nurses to go overseas so we can replace nurses with, with replace those nurses with nurses from somewhere else. That's not a sustainable thing. That's not a slight against those nurses. Yeah, it's just a weird fucking system, and it, it's the same with the police. Why, why are we training police that are not going to stay here more than five years? Some of them not even that, that they're going to take that 25 grand relocation. Jesus. 
That's a, that's a good offer. And double their wages and go over to Australia. Oh.